Hello and welcome to another edition of Press the Action Button Podcast on digital-delirium.com. As always, I am your host, Joystick, and with me this week, say hello to the people, D-Pad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is D-Pad. Thank you for calling. That's right, four fingers and a glove. That comes with four fingers and a thumb. All right, everybody, act now and you will get our free mittens. Kittens mittens. They make your kittens walk like mittens. And then they don't make any noise. Hedgers and clippers and hedgers and clippers, be there! <laughs> seeking, seeking, seeking! And, and uh, also with us this week, thank you for that, by the way, D Pad from D Pad Leah, is Game Face. Say hello to the people, Game Face. Hello, people, Game Face here, and welcome to Press the Action Button. Button. <laughs> Button. 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 If you have Button. any questions, Please go to www.w.com and press the enter button. button. There's naked chicks on there. It's the easy. Main menu. Uh, check out cinemassacre.com and see James Rolfe and uh, uh, Mike's uh, review of the, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show menu. Because the menu itself is more worthy of review than the show itself because it's been already been done to death. Yeah, the show sucked. That cartoon blew. It sucked so good. Yeah, it sucked. If you'd like to suck my penis, then click the button through the buttonhole and unzip my zipper, and then you can press the penis button, which takes you on a magic you know ride what, to Buttonland. Just stop talking. Just stop talking. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a bunch of silence! That's right, everybody, you can take home some silence, too, and enjoy your own soundtrack to silence, which comes with many famous songs, such as the Silence Song. Including now, also, the Silence Serenade! But there's more! Call now and you will even get a free nothing that comes along with your box! That's right! What can you do with nothing? You can do anything with nothing! Anything you originally could. This product may <laughs> not Stop. do anything. We can't take him <laughs> anywhere! Uh, this is why he's good for the show, though. Well, that and apparently deeply disturbing the audience by... Oh, you mean Higmo? Yes, Higmo. Yeah. Sound guy. Audience? <laughs> well, there's 12 people subscribed to our channel. Facebook. Woo! Start. Are they all people that we know? Are they all people? We'll start Are they all with that? For some reason, one of them is Chris's mom. <laughs> you mean Glitch's mom? Yeah. Awesome. She subscribed to our I Facebook thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tammy. Okay, uh, this week we got some new microphones, so hopefully all the sound problems that we've been having for the last few weeks will be gone. You might have noticed that there were large chunks of conversations missing from last week's episode. That's because the sound problems were so damn bad that I had to remove eight solid minutes. And these new microphones come equipped with a button. They do come equipped with a... It's more like a switch. That's right, it's a noise switch. Just pull the lever and you get an awesome noise. You know what I'm talking about, fellas. There you have it. All this noise could be yours and more. Act now and you will get a free pocket knife. Um, beer. What, what are we drinking? Rabat Bro. Good stuff. It's Canadian. Hey, you want to pop the top? Yeah, pop the top. Just press a little the bit beer. Because I had to... We have a muffin button? See, now you did it. You guys are jerkers. You're a jerk. You're jerkers. You're a jerk face. I get these. T- I go out and get these brand new microphones. You guys. For our play. listeners. But you know you're swaying back and forth, and you're moving further and further. Away. What else did Alex do for the sake of our listeners? Here as well. This is why we <clears> can't <throat> have nice. Things. You could have plenty of nice things and more. That includes a glove. That's right. Four fingers and a thumb. Act Stop now, and you will still get glove. <laughs> you give glove. A do you want more? Name? More? More than you have right now? It's all within your reach. Simply by attaining one of these. A job. Call 1-800-PLEASE-PLEASE-PLEASE-PLEASE-PLEASE Get a life today! I apologize that I realize a lot of you are probably unemployed out there. And I mean that in the nicest way. Yeah. I, I, I always feel bad like going on the internet and like mentioning things about how my work days sucked. And then people are like, oh, that's cool that you have a job. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You need to start being more of a troll. You need to go to school for, for scoundrels. Yeah. Be a troll. Yeah. I do that. I troll, troll school. I troll now and then. You know, I, I, I was trolling. Hate. I was trolling somebody about circumcision today. See, uh, see this now, week. I was defined trolling because I can mean a lot of things. 
Well, I start, uh, somebody was like, I'm not circumcising my son. What's the point in circumcision? I said, sanitary purposes. And she was like, I me, 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 me. Well, I didn't want to say that because there are probably plenty of uncircumcised people who feel the same way. But then all, all of a sudden, this eruption of trolls started like coming back at me and they were all like, you can't say that. Haven't you ever heard of soap? And I said, haven't you ever heard of smegma? <laughs> and like all these people got real offended and they were like, you can't say that. I can't believe it. And then some people started taking my side and like, no, he's right. I circumcised my kid. I think we said smeg on this podcast, a la Red Dwarf, but never smeg. Hey, Ian, I think what you're talking about is man. Do 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 Super fighting robots. That is the grossest superhero. That is the grossest superhero in the history of superheroes right there. I'd just like to point that out. With his trusty sidekick. Oh no. Who's his sidekick? Roll. <laughs> Condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Trojan man. That's a sidekick. Uh, as in, as in fat roll. Fat roll. I'd like to. I, I, I got Specify. It. Okay. Lol. Lol, 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 lol. Stop. Okay. I will ball tap you with a beer can, D pad. Not when I'm cross legged. You know, speaking of hitting people with a beer can, did you know that some guys tried to rob a beer store by yes. using beer as their weapon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they hit it's the resourceful. Clerk. They picked up the beer and then hit the clerk over the head with it and tried to make a break for it. I would say that is they very... They got caught. I would say that is very, very American thing to do, but it could quite possibly be German, too. And I say that with all the pride in the world, like some 50% German. It, it could be uh, Irish. Yeah, but Irish people don't rob people. Or use beer in vain. Yes! That, that's even better. <laughs> even better. Who said they use beer in vain? They just hit the guy and run off with it. And you go That's drink wasting it. alcohol. That's alcohol abuse. No. <laughs> not if you drink it later. Alcohol abuse. Not if you drink You're it later. You're not going to drink the one that you chucked at the guy's head because it's going to be all foamy. That's why you let that one sit the longest. That would be your trophy. You'd be like, yeah, see this dent in this can? <laughs> Guess where it came from. <laughs> I throw it at guy's head while Hey, doesn't that mean we get a discount? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's take it back. Five finger discount. Five finger death punch is a good bit. Steel toe abortion. <laughs> Steel toe. What? Please, please cut that out. <laughs> that was horrible. That's a song that somebody wrote. Did Andrew write this song? It actually, was not Andrew. It's someone he knows. <laughs> I'm a little song. bit surprised because I would not be surprised at all if Andrew didn't. If Andrew did write that yeah, song. It's surprising, isn't it? Believe it or not, no. It's some guy who he knows. I don't know. If- I don't, I'm not even absolutely sure who it is, because I don't think they hang out anymore. But <laughs> Andrew would write it and think it was hilarious and then tell you all about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else? That's not a song. That's a haiku. <laughs> okay, so I'm filming this movie called The Ultimate Dance Gamer, and we had Andrew, Dr. Drew, as one of the extras, and he was the most, like, belligerently obnoxious extras I've ever had, because all <laughs> yeah. I wanted to do was sit in a chair and start conversations with everybody else. Which is kind of what you're supposed to do when you're an extra, but when you're starting conversations with the director and the people who are acting, like actually have speaking lines, while the camera's running, it gets a little bit annoying. So he's sitting there and he insists on having my clipboard. Because I had a shot list and he's like, Yo, I, have, I want that clipboard, I want to I wanna, I wanna write a song. And he doesn't he doesn't do anything with it. I let him have the clipboard, and he just sat there with a pencil and a tablet of paper and his clipboard for the whole day of shooting. And I'm like, are you going to write a song with that, or are you just going to sit it there like a freaking tea cozy? I was like, I'm, I'm going to write a song. I just have to wait for the inspiration to come. Finally, it's like six hours later. We're done shooting, and he thinks for a second, scribbles some things down on the paper, and sets it aside and goes home and doesn't even take it with him. And I pick up the tablet, and all it says is three lines. Screw the Beatles and Grizzly Adams. By them I cannot abide. Power metal is cool as is ska. And I said, that's not a song, that's a haiku, and it's a freaking stupid haiku. <laughs> I'm not even sure, it, does it even fit the haiku formula? It doesn't fit the song formula. Unless you're the Mars Volta. Because they suck. <laughs> Or you're one of those hardcore bands where you're not. None of your songs are longer than about 11 seconds. It might fit that. Those are sweet. We got to do that. Learn to play your bass, damn it. <laughs>
<laughs> I will. I will I... totally pick up a drum kit. If I learn to play bass. But who's going to play hardcore guitar? Because Andrew always says, oh, I can't do it anymore. Plus, our band sucks. Dude, if you get, if you guys were in a band with, with Dr. Drew, he would just make fun of you guys, including himself, all day. He would just be like, why would you... What? That's what he does every single time he's over here. Be like, why would we go out and get another microphone when our band sounds like crap to begin with? Well, that's what I think about our podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, our, really, why did we get different microphones? Was because it because I tried to bite one. And because I had to, it took me four hours to edit the last one because I had to take out eight minutes of it and I kept having to turn hey, hey, bear sections in mind of it up. There are some episodes of this that sound really, really good. What yes, happens if they don't some... sound good? Do we not get paid? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Does Hikmo get the press? Your mom happens if, if they don't sound good. <laughs> but but Shit. not his mom. Please tell me you're not flipping the switch on that thing. No, I'm doing this. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if he was. You guys want to get to the first topic and silence your phone, please. Yeah, yeah, let's let's break up the topics. First one is something that I know Deep Head will not be happy about. Well, I already know this one. Capcom cancelled Mega Man Universe. They listed various circumstances as the reason. Okay, so first we don't off, get a real reason. Circumcision. Second off, ICP. <laughs> Third, Third off, half naked clown. It was a, a clown. Circum- without a circumcision. Anyway, yeah, this sucks because I was actually really looking forward to this game. Did you see any of the trailers, man? No, but it's Mega Man and Universe and a Mega Man Universe. It was a, it was gonna be a 2D like yeah. standard Mega Man game, yeah. but it was going to give you the option to build levels. Well, I can kind of understand Whoa! why they why they wouldn't do something like that because I I always thought that that would. You're saying it would be a Mega Man game to end all Mega Man games. Kind of, sort of. It's kind of like a the little big planet of Mega Man games. Yeah, you know and that's that's a cool idea, but uh, I kind of you know half the thrill in Mega Man is not knowing what's coming next. You know, having well, playing see, through you someone else's You could just download other people's levels, and then you wouldn't know what's coming next. Yeah, but then the, nothing's sacred anymore. Like it, it wouldn't be a game. It would end all Mega Man games. It's just like you everyone's don't always play someone's penis shaped level. That would be cool. <laughs> you know, someone so would create a penis-shaped level. That someone would. Be so would. awesome. Oh, that glow. But it's like a pathway that goes around, like the the it traces a penis, so you don't realize it's penis-shaped until the end. Kind of like the street that Billy Wrigley lives on. It's a cul-de-sac. Well, no, actually, it's a big long street that ends in a cul-de-sac, and down towards so the base of it, there is like another a cul-de-sac. cul-de-sac. No, no, no. It's a long, long. Street. So it's like a barbell. You, you totally missed that joke. A ball to sack, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Uh, 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 my boy, my boy. No, it's a big long street that ends in a cul de sac, and then towards the base of it is another cul de sac that looks like a ball sack. That's the ball de sac. Well, just because uh, they create this, it doesn't mean they can't create future Mega Man games. I mean, they created a little big planet, too. They could, but first of all, no one would buy them. Second yeah, of all, would. people would, Mega Man. No, a few people would buy them, and then they'd copy it onto Mega Man Universe, and then just put it up as downloadable content. Like once there's uh, some, once it's up to the users to create levels, nothing sacred anymore. Like, like it would be awesome. Don't get me wrong, but as I said, it would end all Mega Man games. It wouldn't. I don't think so, but like there have been many games with level creators and stuff like that that have sequels to them, like. Starcraft. Hey, is Little Big Planet two out well, there? Well, yes, it is. I really want it. It's well, awesome. Starcraft. Um, I, you know, it, like it, it was. It was really cool how you people could created your entire own. campaigns for it. They made entire campaigns. Yes. They made entire different games. Like I did. They, yeah, I made an RPG in it. Yep. Yeah, I, you exploit all the you know the mechanics of the game, and you can make make an RTS and do an RPG or a. I did. Kind of like Minecraft. Yeah. You know what I've seen people do with Minecraft on YouTube? What? I've seen people make Minecraft scenarios that are like illustrations of like binary calculators. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. With redstone. Yeah, yeah. The electrical element. You know what someone built in a. I don't know if I showed you the video, but you know what someone built in a Little Big Planet 2? Your mom? Windows XP. Whoa. It had some working programs. I mean. 
obviously it wasn't in quite the depth of Windows, the real Windows XP, but it had But it was better than Vista. It had like a music player. It was better than Vista. <laughs> Everything is better than Vista except for Emmy. Emmy sucked balls. No, there's something that's even that worse. Windows Bob. Windows Bob? There's, look it up. The Bob there's Show? A, a Windows Bob. No, the Bob Show was the shit. More than any win- Windows... It totally They could have come out ever. What was what was Windows Bob? It was just window, some window Bob. stupid window Bob, window GIF Bob, operating Bob. system. It's like you you walk into your room, like the the main page is like your room. Like you click on the fireplace for the games, and you click on your desk to bring up a Word document. And you click up click on your calendar to bring up your calendar. It was experimental, and I don't think it was even worth money. But like you know, look it up. Like it, it's the stupidest looking. Excuse of an operating system that ever came out by a professional company. There is an operating system. It's Linux-based called Beer. That is awesome. Because the guy was drinking when he developed it. <laughs> you, you, right. You know what someone created with the first Little Big Planet, which the the world builder in it is not where near is as powerful as the one in Little Big Planet Two. Beer. Someone built an analog calculator in it. Sweet. <laughs> That's what I just said. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is what, what uh, Game Face just said, really. Not, but no. <laughs> no. Wait, an analog calculator? An, 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 yeah. How, like what? I'm, I'm not sure. Because like, I could mean... Like, you, you showed me the analog calculator on eBay, and you said you wanted to buy one. Oh, you mean like one of those hand-cranked calculators? Yeah, that, no, that was, was it. That was digital. It was just mechanical. So you, you called it analog. No, because that would be stupid. Well, then you called it stupid. Okay. <laughs> Come look at this stupid calculator. Dude, it's made of stupid technology. Okay, the way stupid technology works is you think it's analog, but it's actually mechanical. Whatever, they built one of them things. Mechanolog. <laughs> they built one of those things with a little big Planet One level builder. And that is awesome. That is awesome. I've seen them make, uh, like, working shotguns with, like, pump action. Like, yeah, you know, they've done TNT that, too. to expel all the projectiles. Down yeah, the they've nose. done that, too. And people have the time. But just, I, I think that just because it has a level creator, it doesn't mean it's going to kill the series. So I think I'm thinking about being bohemian. I mean, like, being, like, unemployed and poor, like, intentionally. Because that's what, like, bohemians used to do. Right, be, like, and they used to walk I barefoot. see a little silhouette of a man. Yeah. Yeah, like that. I'll like make up stuff like that and call it original. I didn't make that up, idiot. I I, I caught that D pad game face joystick. <laughs> Shut up <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, that's just sad. <sighs> Wanna move on? <laughs> no, but yeah, let's do it. I just can't go on. A petition was started online. To keep Duke Nukem Forever off of Walmart store shelves, <laughs> the petition claims that this is because the game is sexist. Because instead of Capture the Flag, it's got a mode capture called the Capture the Babe. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to say Capture the Fag. And in the That'd be flag's hilarious. Fa- in the flag's pa- fl- the place is a woman. I, c- I-, I figured... So what, you just and pick you her just up? you pick and her up and you carry her back to your base. <laughs> that's not that's sexist. The mo- yeah, that's, that's hilarious. I know. Thing ever on a video Wait, game. Do women feel, like, intimidated by being picked up? Or by be- being imagined to be picked up? Being objectified. They say that it's basically kidnapping women. Well, it's not kidnapping them, it's just making them First seem... off, they're not real. Second off, I can't think of any woman women who would real? object. No, I can think of plenty. <laughs> No, I, I can't think of any woman who would object to being picked up and, like, escorted. Yeah. It's like, no, hey, do you want to come to a game and be a flag? <laughs> no, I, 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 I wouldn't do that. Then. Honestly, if I, if, I wouldn't, if I was a woman, you know. You'd play capture the flag with, I don't know, Megan? Oh, jeez, that would be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sorry, know, Megan. I just pulled it. Because I don't know that many women around here. Yeah, she's pretty much the only girl who's hung out with us. I mean, they got Terry, but I haven't seen her for so long. Yeah, because you missed her wedding. I think Mary's in the next room. We know her. (laughs) Does she really count, though? Do you want to play Uh, Capture the Flag where Mary is the flag? Let's go ask her. (laughs) That'd be funny. Anyway, yeah, this is... 
it's a video game, for God's sake, and I don't see why people take this so seriously. I mean, you watch like five, ten seconds of Duke Nukem, you hear him crack a joke, and it's obviously not meant to be taken seriously by anyone, and people do anyway. What I what I'm curious is why they don't take his lines more serious instead of capture the babe, you know? Like that's that makes sense. Like that's just joking around, you know. Women could feminists could be like, I don't think we should be objectified. Like we can't defend ourselves in the middle of a fight. Well, you can't, but and then we tell I those see why that to get back offensive. in the kitchen. Exactly. Anything right, Alex? you can do, I can do better. No, you I don't can't. want to be objectified. Yes, I can. Like that. Then no, stop can. being Bitch, objectified, woman. You're the people who keep being objectified, so don't point. I don't know where I'm going with this joke. Damn it, woman, stop being objectified and go make me a sandwich. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I don't We're know. We're awful. I, I've I've heard a bunch I've heard a bunch of uh, arguments like that. Like, oh well if they you know, if they want to stop being objectified then maybe they should start, you know, walking their own talk. But and the same goes to, you know, people who are racist against black people. Like, oh, well, if they want us to stop calling them stupid, then why don't they, you know, get an education? Because statistically, they don't yes. get educations. But seriously, like, it, it's a combination of both. It's like we, you know, we run them down and they run down themselves. And it's not anybody's fault, but they're just going to have to get over it, you know, and if they're going to, if they want to, you know, move up in the ranks. Yeah, I've seen some women that go out and wear skimpy clothing, you know, the kind that doesn't cover much, and they'll wear, like, short shorts, and, like, the biggest enemy, the top that goes down to, like, here, or whatever, and yeah, the biggest then enemy. they'll be, like, big-time feminists, and I'll be like, why are you dressing like that if you're a feminist? It's like, gay well, people want to be seen as equal, and then they go to gay pride parades. That doesn't represent gay people. I know, like, duh. I, I, I think quite like, often it represents the it, it represents the people the low end of it. Yeah, I know like what? How many gay people? And I've only ever known one person to actually go to a gay pride parade. And I, I called him out on it. I was like, "You really want people to view you that way?" He's like, "Well, you only live once." And I was like, Whoa. "What?" That didn't answer my question, asshole. It's a spoony reference. That was a spoony to a game called Phantasmagoria because there was some inspector in that game and Phantasmagoria 2 a puzzle of flesh and there was some inspector that said it like button. that asshole <laughs> and he made fun of her for it it's press funny. my buttons I've got my eye on you asshole like that <laughs> wow <laughs> no. button, oh, button sorry about button. that I'm kind of sick a little bit got a sore throat I'll get over it Beer. Beer. Beer is good. And stuff. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, the music for this week is the music, the soundtrack to Illusions of Gaia, which is a very, very good, difficult, if incredibly difficult at parts, Arp? RPG for the Super Nintendo. I would recommend checking it out. Anyway, yeah. Sexism. Is it funny? Yeah. I thought so Guilty. too. Guilty. What's the song? That song from Avenue Q that everybody's a little bit racist or something like that. Sometimes doesn't mean we're going around committing hate crimes. I know it might be a little uncouth, but laugh because we all know they're based on truth. Don't <laughs> take it as personal attacks. Everyone's a little bit racist, so relax. <laughs> In a truly egalitarian world, we would all not be afraid of making fun of each other. <laughs> yeah. That's what, so say if people like Yahtzee. Yeah, that's what, uh, when we went to um, Nito Burrito over the weekend, that's what the guy there was like, you guys make fun of each other a lot. Yep, we do. You're not really friends until you can make fun of people, make fun of each other relentlessly. And you should be used to having people make fun of you because you hang around Dr. Drew a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I've, had a few, I've, had a, I've had a few friends, like, I've had a few friends that I was just kind of afraid to make fun of because, like, they're just so nice, and I don't think they'd insult me back. They and then they like, do, oh, oh, and okay. you're defenseless against it. No, like, I've known, like, like, do you remember my friend Wesley? Yeah. Yeah, you remember Wesley. Like, yeah, like, he, we never made fun of each other. Yeah. We'd joke about other people, but, like, we're always, like, really polite, and, you know, that 
friendship just kind of like, you know, I haven't seen him in years. This is a strictly online petition, and I seriously doubt that it's actually going to go anywhere. Because how many online petitions ever actually accomplish anything? It's easy to just not go to the website where the petition is and completely ignore it. You know? So, I mean, do online petitions like this ever accomplish anything? I don't think this one will. I think dude, I think Walmart's going to be like, Hey, Duke Nukem, that'll make money. Let's sell it in our stores. That's what I think is going to happen. No, but I, I, I don't think that's really the point. I don't think the feminists are trying to take down the game from being sold on stores, but just the fact that they brought it up and they made a scene makes people like us talk about it on our podcasts for other people to hear, and it ripple effects. And that's it's the Westboro Baptist Church effect. Uh, You're dumb. <laughs> uh, you know those people who protest funerals? Oh. Of, of soldiers. Of gay soldiers? No, just of soldiers. Not gay soldiers. They do protest. They did protest the funeral of Heath Ledger because he played a gay character in a movie. No, their, their spiel is that uh, soldiers are dying in overseas wars because America allows homosexuals. And probably other. Or something like that. Other things. Who knows what they're thinking? I, they just want attention. Yeah. Um, they were going to protest. There was there was a Mennonite family in central Pennsylvania that all their like all but one of their children died in a house fire. And they were going to... They said that they, they didn't. They, they uh, skipped out on it. But they said that they were going to come protest the funeral because, quote-unquote, uh, like, this is... God's punishment for somebody trying to sue them. It's like, stop, you know, it's like, stop sinning and children will stop dying. Which is a total fallacy. But it, oh, gosh. Sin or not, we're human, we die. Anyway, we're human and we sin, too. You know what's the funniest part of this story? Well, that's another story, but not Is these people... You dropped your beer can? It's empty. Oh. Anyway, these people honestly think... That serious gamers are going to buy their games at Walmart. The Westboro Baptist Church? No, no, the, the people who did this petition. Oh, think about that. How many serious gamers ever buy anything at Walmart? Come on. Oh, so they're petitioning Walmart. Yeah, Walmart in, spe- in specific. If they want if to you consider Paul, something... If you consider uh, Paul a yes, serious gamer. If they, if they wanted to get serious with this, wouldn't they target... GameStop? Mm-hmm. I mean... Well, they know that gamers hate GameStop. No! A lot of the serious gamers do ha- either hate GameStop or hate some of the things GameStop does. I hate some of the things GameStop does. I don't hate GameStop itself. We're busy! Oh, uh, no, we have a child. Ay ay ay! Seabass, uh, come be on the show with us. Come be on the show. Don't, 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 en- don't encourage him. Don't encourage him. We have a two-year-old. He's making faces at us. He just threw an apple at me. <laughs> hey, you took bites out of that. Okay, um, the new Mortal Kombat game will feature EA's online pass if you want to play it online. Do you remember what the online pass is? Not off the top of my head. Basically, you have this, uh, coat. Okay, my own element here for a second because I just stepped away, but before we, uh, I'd like you to debrief me on what that last topic was, but first, I just want to say, Sebastian said this today. Mary was making coffee, and he was pointing at the coffee maker. This little, little two-year-old kid is going, coffee? Coffee? And I was like, making coffee! And he's like, making coffee! And then yeah. I said it again, I was like, making coffee! And he goes, making waffles! And I was like, oh, there's no waffles. I was We're like, out oh, of that's cute! Out of waffles. Anyway, yeah, okay. Um, the new Mortal Kombat game, which looks awesome, it looks like Mortal Kombat 1 through 3, which is the best the series has ever gotten. Mortal Kombat 1 through 3 were fucking awesome. I loved them. But the new Mortal Kombat game will feature EA's online pass. If you want to play it online, do you remember discussing the online pass in the past? Pass in the past, in the past, in the past. Hedgers and Clippers and Hedgers and Clippers. Sea King, Sea King, Sea King, Sea King. Be there. I didn't answer your question. 
I didn't answer your question. Answer my question. Okay, fine. What was the question? <laughs> Do you remember what the online pass is, or should I explain it? That thing where you can't even play the game unless you're online? Um, close to that. It's, um, you get a code in the thing if you buy it, if in the game, if you buy it brand new, and you enter that code, and it's only good for that one time, so it's only good for one console. And it allows you to play it online. If you buy the game used, you have to pay for it. Right. So, it's like $10 for playing it online. And, ah, oh, this thing pisses me off so bad. This is just their way of trying to combat used game sales, you know? Yeah. Trying to make gamers pay full price for these games. And trying to force this onto them. If you're gonna... Try to get $10 off, we'll pile $10 on it by making you pay to play it online. <sighs> and I know, <laughs> I kind of want to try this, because I, this game, because I really look forward to it, but I really don't like this. And I really want to tell people to protest this. Don't buy the online pass. If you're going to buy Mortal Kombat, just buy it new, I suppose. You know what I mean? Oh, damn, you got to do that. You can't hear... The microphone is not going to pick you up from way the fuck over there. Hickmo's well, got to hear what he just said. The retarded is because I knew the microphone wouldn't hear me. Could please repeat it again for Hickmo? Hickmo has now heard. I haven't seen any sound problems come up in the waveforms on Audacity this week, so that's cool. Yeah, it's solid. Look at it. All right, don't say anything for a second. Watch the screen. Solid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Goes yeah. down smooth. No pain, no gain. I know this, I know this uh, game is going to sell well because it's heavily anticipated. People have been wanting a good new Mortal Kombat for years. And about the best one they've done was rated T instead of rated M. And how are you going to have a Mortal Kombat game rated T? Maybe you remember Mortal Kombat? No. It's awesome. <laughs> I remember Mortal Pong bad. You could shoot laser beams at the other Pong battles. You could blow chunks off of their... Psh, blow chunks. You could take chunks out of their... Well, like, don't battle. blow chunks, because if you blow chunks, I'm going to spew. Well, well if you're going to spew, spew, then I'm going to hurl. And scene. Good Next stuff. Song. Pretty, pretty pain cave. You remember he had Winter's Bone. Winter's Bone. <laughs> Winter's Bone. <laughs> that, what was that, the metal version? No, they said it funny. They're like, Winter's Bone. Yeah, but they didn't growl it. They're like, Winter's Bone. Who are we talking about here? Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Wayne's 2008. World. 2008. Wayne's World Bard- skit. No, no. <laughs> Winter's Bone was the 2011 That's Wayne's right. World skit. That's right. That's right. The 2008 Wayne's, Wayne's World skit was Horton Hears a Ho and Scatatouille. <laughs> did, did, did I show yeah, you that one, dude? No, not the 2008. Yeah, they did a top... Oh, the, they did a top ten list. It was uh, porn titles based on hit movies from 2008. I thought you saw that. What was Scatatouille? There was a rat? Was there like a, a uh, porn they just, rat? They just did... They made up like porn titles based on hit movies. Well, why do they do that? Like, if, if it doesn't have anything to do with the hit movie. Because it's Wayne's World. Because it's funny. Oh, oh so they weren't actual movie productions. No. I was just wondering. No, they were just taking titles of hit movies from 2008 and turning them into porn titles. I still like okay. porn. National <laughs> Pleasure 2, Book of Secretions. You can't tell me that's not awesome. Eternal sunshine of a spotless butt. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> and the number one porn title of the year, Iron, Iron Man. Man. Schwing. 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 <laughs> like Horton Hears a Ho. Horton Hears a Ho. Scatatouille. Gotta love it. Alvin in the Chipmunks. Alvin in the Chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. There's ten of them, and I only remember, like, four. Chipmunking is very popular on the internet. <laughs> What's that? Well, like, we're on television, so I can't tell you. But it involves putting nuts in your cheek. <laughs> <laughs> That's clever. Yeah, it is. This online pass thing just sucks, though, man. I mean, 
Give if you're gonna buy the game new or used, you should get the full fucking game. And I say the exact same thing about um, downloadable content that's already on the disc, which some companies have done that. Um, Capcom hang on, being five. one of them. Let me deposit. I said the exact same thing about uh, downloadable content that's already on the disc. And Capcom has done this. They did it with Resident Evil 5. The multiplayer mode that was part of the game that they didn't that they didn't uh, let players have until like after the game was released was already on the disc. And it was just like a, a few kilobyte file that was like a key that unlocked it on the disc and let you play it. And that was all it did. And that's bullshit, because that's withholding stuff that's already on the disc. You already paid for it. You shouldn't have to pay ten more dollars, you know what I mean? I'll explain later. You know what I mean, dude? Oh, I wasn't listening. Uh, Who's up for another round of beers? What, uh, what time, what time are we at here? Uh, 39 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay, yeah, that's 20 minutes, one more beer, that'll work. Alright, proceed, or if you want to pause it, it doesn't matter, I'll, because I'll be right back. Well, I was going to announce the next topic next, so I'll just pause it. Oh, okay. Dude, you just set your beer on the topics. I know. Get your beer off the topics. No. Want to hear what I my chest hair sounds like? Hang on. <laughs> That's what D-Pad's chest hair sounds like. Dude, you're younger than me and you have thicker chest hair than me. You like it. But you don't have hair on your shoulders. Slint chest hair. <laughs> Buff drink lots. <laughs> we place our faith in blast hard cheese. <laughs> Slab large meats. <laughs> Slab bulk. <laughs> Fridge large meats. Fridge large meats. Roll fizzle beans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, go it's on. Funny. It's funny regardless. That's the. Go difference. on YouTube. YouTube. Look up MST3K Space Mutiny. <laughs> Watch it. Space it's Mutiny well is my favorite time. episode. Of I love <laughs> Space <laughs> Mutiny. Hey guys, I, I borrowed my dad's enforcer for the weekend. I was just about to do the monster match. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see me roll like a bowl full of jelly? <laughs> the, but the best part of all time in Mystery Science Theater 3000 is in Mono's The Hands of Fate, where that guy is just standing there awkwardly, uh, Torgo, and just kind of stumbling around, like, trying to find an explanation for, like, a minute and a half, and finally, Joel just goes, DO, Do SOMETHING! something! <laughs> <laughs> the critic did that on one of his movies. I forget which one. Awesome. Have you ever heard the critic's stomach talk? That's creepy, but... His no. stomach has a, is a character in the show, and it has a voice, and it's like, Yeah, why don't you slather some butter on that bread? I've seen, like, a hundred episodes of his, but I have not seen that. Next topic. Reports came in over the weekend of some brand new 3DS systems... We're experiencing random crashes. Some reported cl- crashes while playing third-party games. Others reported cl- crashes while playing built-in software. And there was even one report of a crash while it was just sitting on some guy's desk at the home m- menu. So, I mean, this is happening completely at random. And Nintendo does not know why. This so is a- the new Windows Vista? I hope not, but this is highly unusual for Nintendo. I mean, usually Nintendo doesn't have bad problems with their software right out of the gate. That is weird. Nintendo was never really buggy. Well, okay, NES, but that's about it. Yeah, and uh, I guess you might say that about the Virtual Boy, too. No, it's not buggy. It just sucked. Yeah. I've never heard of the Virtual Boy being buggy. Because remember the NES, (laughs) even when it wasn't, like, even when it was working, it would once in a while just do weird things. Yeah, you'd get all these letters and characters on the screen. Yeah. That was weird. And that was, like, their, to my recollection, that was their only incredibly problematic system. Everything else was, uh... You you know? um, I know there have been some very rare occurrences of Wii's breaking, but, I mean, that's even more rare than the PlayStation 3 breaking, which doesn't happen often. It was, uh, 
It's like the 360, though. That's like the most problematic <laughs> uh, The Red Ring system. of Death. That's probably the most problematic system since uh, the I NES. Can't let you do that. <laughs> Seriously, that I'm probably... your boss, 360. Sorry, Dave. I am a man! I am the clit commander! <laughs> commander of all clits. Make that shit work. Well, you don't want to rub the clip the wrong way. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that whole scene where they're talking about it on the news. We are the clip. Oh, yeah, None it's a tiny safe. offshoot of the labia, the liberating apes before imprisoning apes. <laughs> uh, I wonder, I hope that Nintendo can get this under control fairly soon. Like I said, they don't know what the problem is right now. They just know that they're having systems crash. So hopefully they can do some beta testing or whatever and isolate the problem and fix it really quick. And I hope this isn't widespread. I don't know. The article did not say how widespread this problem was. Yeah. And I, for one... Have not have never been all that excited about the 3DS. I really liked my DS, but there are some things that put me off about the 3DS, especially the battery life, which is about three hours. Three hours that won't get you through a long plane ride or bus trip. Come on. I'm having that kind of funny deja vu feeling. Oh, great! Think of it, children. Three hours. The poor children. <laughs> That's <laughs> three gallons every oh. time I flush the toilet. Oh, okay. <laughs> you so did, Fry Man. You so told me three hours. <laughs> Don't oh, not no. tell me that is my car up there on my roof. Get it down. Get it down now. Okay. Oh, so it'd be kind of like that movie Predator, except instead of <laughs> killing people, <laughs> he's uh, you know crapping. crapping. That was the best episode of Aqua Teen. Hey, check it out! I'm on TV! I'm on channel uh, 666. Oh, that's weird. (laughs) Do do not give me that look. No one ever told me that you can't pay for sex with pennies. (laughs) Bing! Hey, you know that thing that came flying out of your house the other day? Well, it came in through my window. Hey, guess what it bounced off of? Yeah, I know you're staring at it. I gotta <laughs> drain it like three times a day so I can think good. The episode... Well, what, what are you doing? Go ahead. What are you doing, man? Oh, um, I'm downloading porn at 14 kilobits a second. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, man. I got a cable modem back here. <laughs> Every once in a while I get up and get on the internet to see if they can put up any new porn because I looked at it all. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> That's so cool. I remember uh, eating carpet, but not so much the robots and the lasers. <laughs> but the best episode is the episode with the turbo toilet where he got disembodied and they were trying to find something to do with his Total head. recarl. Total recarl? Yeah. yeah. He's dropping f bombs over here. Check it out. I'm gonna start dropping f bombs. Check it out. Fart you, farter. <laughs> That's not how you f bomb shake. What are you doing with that crane? Oh, I know it's orange. I asked for meandering sunrise. They gave me turquoise. <laughs> I didn't say butt load. I said ass load. Bureaucrats. <laughs> the lines that has some of the best lines. <laughs> Your moment. His movement. Oh, oh I did it again! <laughs> Doo doo. There, I did it again. Doo doo. Coming out. <laughs> Love that stupid show. <laughs> and you're gonna hook Carl's head up to that? Oh, you're right. What was I thinking? I just don't. Well, why am I so old and black? Why am I black? <laughs> Carl, that show would just Carl be nowhere makes near as show. funny without Carl. He's like murder face. He's like murder face. He's like, like murder he, face like and actually. Nathan Explosion combined. Yeah, he is. I, I, I was just thinking like murder face is like the one character that always makes the scene. Even though he's like the most unlovable character on Metal Ops. He just, he, he'll just say things that'll make you like but die I like a little the sausages. Inside. The sausages. No, 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 Toki. That was, that was a festival for sausages. That was in Vienna. That was a sausage festival. 
<laughs> I love that show too. Anyway, I mean, it's a sausage festival in which there are no places for me to insert the sausage. <laughs> yes, Toki. Yes, Toki. The sausage. The sausage. <laughs> uh, I wonder if this will spell out any long-term, any long-term problems for the 3DS. I certainly hope not. I hope they can get this fixed, and I hope it's not bricking systems. It didn't say the article didn't say it was bricking systems, so you said brick. I kind of have my doubt that it is turning these systems into a. $250 paperweight. Well, I do need a paperweight, but what I really want is a game system. Simpsons reference. <laughs> okay, um, want to get to the last story? Let's do this. Let's trudge Rockstar's boldly. new game, L.A. Noir, will be featured that at the Tribeca Film Festival. It is the Wait, first a game is being featured at a film festival? Yes, it's the very first time this has ever happened. It's the very Gotham. first time that a game has ever received this honor. And this, this tells you something. Robert De Niro is one of the judges who decides what gets onto this film festival and what doesn't. He put a game on there. Wow. Yeah, and he put a game on there. Go him. Yeah. Uh, we don't talk in the theaters like we're Siskel and Ebert. We drink box wine and we listen to Weezer. White kids love hip hop. White kids love hip hop. That's is that a white kids in the... Is that a... The whitest kids you know song. No, I love whitest kids you know, but yeah. that was not there. Did you ever see their uh, song funny. about Hitler? Yeah, I've seen their Hitler rap. <laughs> H-I-T-L-E-R Driving down the street, my fancy guy. Okay, so I went to work in uh, Williamsport. Uh, I drove up to Williamsport uh, for work the other day. And uh, the manager of our branch up there, his name is Kyle... His name is Kyle Bixler, and he totally has a Hitler stash. So we started calling him Kyle Hitler. <laughs> and Kyle like, Hitler! And I was so tempted to just sit down next to him and say to my boss, Hey, hey, hey do you see Kyle? <laughs> He's just pointing up. Do you, do, see do, Kyle? Do, do you see Kyle? No, see, no, do you see Kyle? He's yeah, over there. He's, yes, I see Kyle. He's up there He's right at there. like a 75-degree uh, angle. You, you know upward. what? You should tell him about cum hose. <laughs> I came across this storage cabinet that we buy parts from Cummins Diesel, C-U-M-M-I-N-S, and everything that Cummins does just seems like some bigwigs are just like rolling around in their office laughing about these names that they come up with. There's this whole cabinet. It's like, it's it's just abbreviated, and there's plenty of room to write on, but I looked, and I looked down, there's like five shelves. Cum, 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 cum hose. What? Come. I took a picture of it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> this is so great. This is at like Come a host. truck servicing company in Williamsport, like a serious business. I'm like, what? Well, it's not like they're, uh, you know, the people they're affiliated with have any choice. Like they gotta buy from somewhere. They, yeah, they don't buy. have to la- abbreviate it like that. No. They- <laughs> Maybe they demand it. Maybe it's part of the business ag- agreement. You know, you need oil. You need oil. You can't really bite the hand that feeds. I don't know how. No, it's big. not a diesel company. It's a diesel engine company. I don't know how big of a uh, film festival this is. I've not heard of it, which I guess is a little surprising since Robert De Niro is involved in it, and that's a pretty big name. But still, the fact that a uh, video game got into a film festival is pretty big, and it. Does it suggest that video games might finally be seen on the same level as movies from a storytelling perspective? I notice all the people who who, uh, dispute the fact that video games are becoming a form of art are stupid. So, yeah. Well, then Roger Roger Ebert isn't stupid. He's 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 ignorant on the subject of video games, but he's not stupid. He never recanted that statement. He says he regrets but saying he did it. Once make it to the second level of Donkey Kong Country. No, it was Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Okay. So that's cool. That doesn't. But mean he, he's not a gamer. He's not stupid. He's very, very smart. But he's a very he's ignorant in- on the subject of video games. 
knows. And he, and he admits that he's ignorant on the subject, but he said, and this I agree with, that uh, he hasn't heard anybody. Like, he's he's been all over in the world of art. You know, he's read literature, he's seen paintings, he's seen amazing movies, and he's never met a gamer who can compare their medium to the famous works of, you know, um, you know, famous literary literers here. and... Uh, Liter- literary deep head name drop I, I, can't, I can't think the Huxley or uh, or uh, Kubrick Shyamalan that's a name drop Sh- dude that was a stupid name he did name one drop. of the worst <laughs> movies of last year <laughs> Shyamalan who is Shamal? oh M. Night Shyamalan okay. yeah that yeah that douche what did you think Shamehamehan it sounded like you were saying Camelot but like M. Night Shamehamehan <laughs> You're a stupid name drop. Alex Kuhn, Alfred is... Hitchcock. <laughs> You're just gone with Alfred tell, Hitchcock. Tell Deep Head what our MC recent Escher. episode with MC Escher was an artist. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, Ebert said he was. You know, no one could compare the works of uh, video games to painters, literary. Well, I think there are some or, uh, that at least filmmakers. That at least long down the line might be considered oh, timeless. I, I like, don't like, doubt uh, masterpieces of <laughs> art. Like Definitely. Shadow Andrew of the Colossus is the first one that springs to mind. Yeah, from same a here. Sto- That's what I said. From a storytelling point of view, I would say Mass Effect. Um, Andrew, uh, Dr. Drew once put it very interestingly. He said, I didn't understand his reasoning, but I understood his example, his, how he, when he clarified. He said, video games can't be considered art because they don't have a they, because they have they cater to a target audience, whereas art just kind of is. And but then but then he Easy. proceeded to say that elements of video games can be art. The level design can be art. The story can be art. The graphics can be art. But the game as a whole is not art. The, the fact that you're used, playing like it. getting paid yeah. the art the the level designers and the creators getting paid as an example of why it can't be art. And I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah. The, I mean... Yeah, but most artists get paid. Not all, yeah, but most. Yeah, because, like, are you going to say Michelangelo didn't is no longer an artist because he got paid for his work? Exactly. Or Leonardo is no longer an artist because he got paid for it? Or Renoir, you know? He was... What era was it? I forget. He was one of those... St- Snooty French artist, impressionist. Who was an impressionist? Picasso? No, before Picasso. I don't think Picasso impressed any. Picasso? No, he was French. Picasso? Picasso's Italian. <laughs> no, <laughs> he wasn't Picasso. <laughs> Monet? No, he was an impressionist. Jeez, let me just go get out my monocle. Anyway, well, moving on. Okay. I would like to. I would like video games to be recognized as a I think, as a good storytelling medium. I think or art. I think. Well, Ebert said that they can tell a story the way a movie can, or a painting can, or you know. I don't see why not. Well, he he said he said that they can't because they, you know, the fact that you're playing through them, you're putting you know yourself into them. It's a and when he said yourself. that, but he, I but I think like that's what you're doing when you look at a painting. Like it's not really you're you're living. You know, everyone has a different interpretation of a painting. Everyone has a different interpretation of a movie. Exactly. Unless the movie's like not deep at all. Michael Bay directed it. If, if Michael know. Bay directed it, it's low brow art. Like I, I like the idea of um, <laughs> of. Uh, you know, video games taking you through an artistic fantasy world. You know that the the, the developer created. Have you seen from that? his own, you know from his own mind's eye? And that's especially what I like in art. the eighties and nineties, you play those video games. I mean, well, it's not so much the case anymore. I mean, if today's audience goes back and plays them, they might be nostalgic. But if you it's grew nostalgic. up with that stuff, no. But if you grew up with that stuff, everybody has a different. I mean, because I had a really unique way of thinking of it when I used to play Super Mario Brothers for the first time. You know, I. That's the kind of thing that would only be hard as I was like, retro- in retrospect. I was like, though. what's behind that? What's behind those hills? What if, you know, like, what if you could go this way instead of that way? 
you know, what's this world like? What's going on in this world? You looked deeper well, into it. Yeah, it beyond, a... beyond the... Eight Better bit. graphics quite often result in one of two things. A more bland design in the name of realism, a la Call of Duty, or a more artistic design while still... They can still look realistic, like it's Uncharted. Awesome. Uncharted. I mean, I don't know. I think for video games to truly be recognized as artists, from artists as art, I, I think that will happen eventually, but by that point, they won't resemble what we know of as video games today. They're going to have to do something really, really out there and cerebral and put and, it up and in a gallery and get, like, news coverage of it. Of it. And at that well, point, our, people will There are video games, games that have now. done stuff like that that largely got ignored by gamers because they were so out there. Exactly. It's just not our target market. Killer7 springs instantly to mind. Killer7 is very, Killer seven, very any, out there. Any and, of the games that that guy did. What else did he do? He did, uh... uh Killer7. No more heroes. No more heroes. And then he did one. He did another one that was very strange, and it was for the DS. But I can't remember what it was called. I'd have to look it up. But I think things like that, things like that, can be considered a form of art. And even some stuff that looks far out there and plays fairly straightforward, like Okami. Have you seen Okami? Yeah, you showed me. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful, but the the art style is pretty out there for video games, but it plays a lot like Zelda. It got ignored. No, Okami, which, no. I think yeah, art, Okami art art games, games are That's like why they new... released it a second time, because the first time it got ignored. Well, then the second time it didn't get ignored. All, all I, know I hope not, because, I mean, the, the Wii version of it is pretty darn good, too. Art games are, art games are a new genre that's picking up, I think. In my opinion, I mean, like Little Big Planet, you know, just games that are severely stylized. Because you know, graphic at first it just it. used to be about graphics, but now it's like I love as much as I love technical proficiency in graphics. I love when you mix that with a good art style too. Yeah, like Call of Duty looks like every other modern day war shooter out exactly. there now. And then you go and play. You play something like Kill Killer Zone. Seven. You go and play something like. First person shooter like Kill Zone, and it's got a very unique look and feel to it. The atmosphere is very different from Call of Duty, and it's because the architecture of the world is alien. The world is alien. The no, enemies have a fairly uniform look without all looking the same, like a real army, but they got a very unique look with the red, with the orange glowing eyes and everything is very menacing and very well done and the art for that game is awesome and I applaud them and they finally got it right with Killzone 2 because Killzone 1 really wasn't that good because they rushed it to, they rushed it to store shelves to compete with Halo 2 all right well um I guess that about uh, wraps her up yeah you wanna you guys want to wrap it up wrap it up wrap it up Okay, this has been another edition of Press the Action Button Podcast on digital-delirium.com. As always, I am your host, Joystick, and I hope this episode turned out a lot better than last week, and I hope I don't have to cut out a lot of footage from, or a lot of audio from it for you guys. Using the delete button. Just the button. 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 Who's got the button? Go on uh, cinemasker.com, click that button, and watch that button review of the DVD menu. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. And move the glow. Move the glow to the button of Google. Anyway. Yeah. And we will talk to you guys next week. Once again, the music for this week was the soundtrack for Illusions of Gaia, an RPG well worth checking out if you like old school RPGs. Um, Say goodbye, D-Pad. That's right. You have just listened to Press the Action Button. You could find, hear all this and more. Join Ian and his friends, Alex and 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 Gameface, who is also Alex, and his <laughs> arch enemy, um, Joystick, <laughs> and their adventures through. Press the action button. Tune in now, and you could get a free DVD box set, silver casing. Farewell. Gameface. We will see you next week. Same button time, same button channel. Hey, Gameface.
What? We must come to fight! We must come to fight! Oh, 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 and clippers and hedges and clippers! Be there! Clippers and hedges and clippers and hedges. Join us next week on the same website. Be there! Okay, good times. We're, we're good, good times. We're at an hour five. We're stopping. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>